When it comes to entertaining science fiction films featuring engaging characters, really scary aliens and hard-nosed soldiers trying to kill them, without doubt the best film to turn to is Aliens. But if this was a double feature screening, then you can't do much better than the other great alien vs human war movie, Starship Troopers. Made by legendary sci-fi filmmaker Paul Verhoeven, Starship Troopers was inspired by the 1959 Robert A. Heinlein novel, which someone ironically Verhoeven thought was boring and didn't even finish reading. Intentionally created as a satirical look at how a fascist state corrupts its youth, the film is now considered a poignant what not to do example based on the folly of governments going to war with an enemy without actually understanding what they're up against, which as it turns out has occurred in the real world a number of times since the film's release. One key aspect of the film is the structure of the global government. In this future timeline, the world is controlled by the United Citizen Federation Stratiocracy, which means everything is being controlled by ex-military personnel. In addition, there exist two classes of people within the society, citizens and civilians. The primary difference between them is citizens have served time in the military and as a consequence have greater privileges over the lower ranked and quite possibly resented civilians. Additionally, citizens are looked upon as positive status symbols and role models. In its purest form, Starship Troopers is a war movie taken from the perspective of the common foot soldier. In this case, Argentinian-born Johnny Rico. Johnny is a brash young man who commits himself to the military for all the wrong reasons. And it's from here he discovers how he and his comrades are completely oblivious to the bigger picture when it comes to the overall scale and objectives of the conflict which somewhat sardonically is presented in the film with a motto of I'm doing my part, even if they don't really know what that part is. Another intriguing aspect of the film is Rico's rapid field promotions, which he accepts with enthusiasm despite his superior officers constantly dying. Yet despite being presented with gruesome and graphic images of the war, which should actually dissuade people from signing up, they continue to enlist anyway, which is part of the naive vigour of youth which is continually being exploited by both the government and the military. Regarding the actual war itself, Earth is in conflict with the alien world of Klandathu, which is the home of the arachnid species whom the humans disparagingly call bugs. When taking a somewhat sceptical conspiracy theorist point of view, and as noted in the film itself, it's not beyond the realms of impossibility to suggest the conflict was intentionally initiated by the Federation. The rationale being to either obtain an unrevealed valuable resource on Klandatha itself, which is certainly not unheard of in human history, or to ensure the war machine, and by extension the Federation government, continue to solidify their stranglehold over the population who are continually distracted by the conflict. When pursuing this line of thinking further, one of the more unique aspects of the film is how the protagonists have little to no understanding of their arachnid adversary. In what has become a common trope in numerous sci-fi stories over the decades, the humans are in conflict with an enemy without really knowing who they are and in some cases never having seen them before. Even though somewhat poetically, it's a school teacher who has any real understanding and respect for the aliens. As a result, the FedNet propaganda machine is constantly engaged to remind people how terrible and evil the enemy is, which not only keeps the wheels of war turning, but also spurs Rico and his fellow roughnecks on. Furthermore, in what could be considered an unusual contradiction in the quest for victory, it can be argued as to why the infantry personnel aren't equipped with better quality weapons, as it clearly takes a lot of bullets to bring down a bug. In what could be a case of war equals profit scenario, it would not be beyond reason to suggest that the weapon manufacturer has a lucrative government contract to supply armaments to the military, with the aim of ensuring the humans don't win the war too quickly, lest they discover that their weapons are suddenly no longer required. With that in mind, in the original Heinlein novel, military personnel were equipped with individual power armour, which was omitted from the film for budgetary reasons, and because it would give the humans, who are effectively an unending resource of replacement soldiers, an unfair advantage. As an extension of this, one of the big reveals is that while Rico and his team are the heroes in the film, we also learn that they are completely expendable. In what is an interesting and unexpected twist of the story, it's revealed that top military intelligence commanders, led by Rico's friend Carl, intentionally ordered Rico's squad on what was effectively a one-way mission in an attempt to capture an unseen controlling arachnid called the Brainbug, regardless of the casualties inflicted. 
Naturally, this then prompts the question of just when is the price of human sacrifice too high, even when you are looking at the bigger picture. As for the bugs themselves, in what could be considered a perverse sense of irony, the hatred of the arachnids is a constant feature throughout the FedNet media, which is designed to enforce a strong xenophobic hostility from the population. Ultimately, the aim is to show the supposed superiority of humans over the primitive arachnids, even though this is not always the case. Yet when putting the psychological study aside and just taking the film for what it is, Starship Troopers is a masterpiece of visual effects magic, with both the spacefaring scenes and the arachnid aliens looking imposing and frightening. With this in mind, there is no denying the sequence on the Planet P outpost where our heroes are confronted by masses of aliens in what is an extremely violent, gruesome and ultimately outstanding piece of science fiction cinema. When it all comes down to it, Starship Troopers is a unique study into why humanity not only thrives on conflict, but also encourages it. In addition, the film highlights how a military-based government is able to give its people a sense of purpose and direction, at the expense of various freedoms, liberties and lives, whilst in turn limiting any semblance of purpose except that of war. The problem is that when viewed from an objective perspective, this way of life makes no sense at all and is actually detrimental to the growth and prosperity of society. Alas, if only it wasn't human nature to behave this way.